So it's pretty late at night. I'm just waiting to go to bed. Um, I was watching the Britney special on TV. And I must say I don't really know much about her, but I knew more than anyone else in the household because obviously I've been catching on to little bits of news about her here and there. Um, to me, ever since she started, it seems she's on a vehicle. Like, it seems like she's pre-planned to be a celebrity before anyone's caught on that she is one. You know, no one's really made her a celebrity. She comes across that she's already going to be a cele celebrity. So I must say she hasn't really done too many interviews in the country where I am. So that makes an impact on her impact. Um, it seems as though her fame is pretty far off from where I live in particular, but it's probably more real in other places in the world where the topic of fame and fortune is more revered or more serious. So, um... So you think of famous Britney, and she just hasn't ever really seemed famous. Um, it seems that she's being made famous. So that's sort of the thing that I'm trying to get at. Um, so I hardly ever watched anything on her because, you know, she had this cheesy fake smile for uh, the beginning of her career, and she seemed unauthentic and... That and that relation with the topic of her and fame, you know, um, sort of didn't really seem that appealing, you know, at the time. Um, so basically, I never really watched much of her, you know, and whatever was presented of her just seemed uh, like some almost like a lie you know, in a way, but truth is she probably has a lot of money now, <laughs> so, uh, so she probably is famous, yeah, she's just had, like, numerous number one hits, when you, there's math, and then there's reality, and you think, oh, is she really that famous, and a lot of people are going, oh, no, she doesn't really seem that famous, but, you know, so she hasn't really escalated on fame, she's escalated on on, um, well, I guess fortune. <laughs> uh, she's escalated without actually people voting her in, you know, as like being the most famous. So, um, yeah. But other than this pre planned judgment on her career, uh, I was watching this documentary and, um, you know, it was sort of. I don't know, when you say the word conservatorship, it seems like a big word and it's kind of boring to sound, to hear. Um, and you think, oh, gee, what what's that? A big drag, you know, let's just push it aside. It has nothing to, to do with entertainment. But, um, <laughs> but when, <laughs> but it, it, this documentary was trying to propel the topic of conservatorship, you know, and her, and sort of trying to make her into this victim of an unfair strategy for other people, the people around her, to get out of money or something. So tip, it's been typically placed there so people can feed off her money and the only side effect is that she won't have very much access to it and no one's going to feel sorry about that. So um, it sort of had that. I had a few interviews with people and people where she lived, when where she grew up and stuff. Um, I must say a little bit of that went over my head because it, it just wasn't that great a put-together production uh, of a documentary. It was pretty raw and 
in a way, it was sort of, he says, she says, it, it, it was a little bit wishy-washy. Um, there was nothing so firm, but some of the statements stood out. Some of them were like, okay, an opinion, and then some were more like, okay, an opinion in a statement, which seems more compelling. And so your attention sort of is there and isn't quite there in some other bits and is there again when someone says something kind of striking to make you try and pay attention. But whoever I was watching it with, they were more interested in the documentary than me. But I still watched it because, I don't know, it, it, they have the ad advertisement that says, tonight, you know, Britney Spears special, and it's like, oh, okay. You know, you don't really get that kind of advertisement, like, hear someone famous and watch this anymore. So it's really funny that that's sort of carried on from the 1990s where that was sort of being made a thing at the time. Um... And it's like, wow, you know, there's hardly ever, you know, so many kind of specials like that, say, which tell the audience to pay attention. And if you like this celebrity, you want to watch this. So, um, but I didn't, I didn't particularly like the documentary, but I didn't particularly dislike it. I watched it all the way through. Um, I just didn't feel like it kept my attention to any great extent. So if they're trying to pint out some sort of trap or dire uh, situation, you know, it 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 wasn't it wasn't you know coming across as so dire and, and so in need of urgent attention. It was just a sort of a wishy washy report, it seemed. But you know, you, you have the idea of what it was trying to tell and it, you're you're like thinking well this is like just a low budget production and and, and you're like going on oh, I'm not really sure I'm really getting the seriousness but um when you hear yeah her in conservatorship I mean I think that's something that's going to be surrounding her whole end of her career um you, you don't think that's a very interesting word and you don't really want to pay attention, but it, when you do, it's like, oh, just dribble, you know, about her not having access to her money. And sure enough, it could be a big thing, but, f you know, you, they haven't made any real Polish production on her and her decrease of fame, you know, her, that came after her sudden shot to stardom with the number one hit, so... Um, there's no documentary that's actually been that good to watch because you're watching independent productions or, or fairly raw productions or or productions you might find on the internet that are, are totally um, cut into little snippets. You know, you don't, you, there's no real polished production and that's sort of what's taking away, I think, the interest or the intrigue to whatever the deal is because... Um, it's it's not polished enough. But saying that, you know, okay, you know, she's in some sort of situation and it's probably going to surround the rest of her adult life. Um, but I didn't really take away anything much from the documentary. I, I thought it was interesting to see the community um, of America in some light, but I didn't really get some sort of astounding impact reaction, you know, to the deal. So, um, so, but I will say, I don't know, um, there's nothing much to say about the documentary. Um, the fact that she's not allowed to have access to her money, I don't know, whatever, um, I think I could t state a conspiracy theory, but it might be a little bit too much for this internet. So, um, <laughs> um, of, of her dire fate, you know, the, the thing that all this slow direction is, and attention is being led to, um, but I 
do not want to say that because it's probably going to be seen as negative. So I'm going to talk about the impact of conservatorship. Um, I don't really know much about it. I do know that if that turned into like some sort of um some sort of wave in the community like parents taking advantage of their children in the same way so that they can get to their money or or get power over them I think that would be a negative impact and would make people want to kick Brit someone like Britney right off the stage because I I think you know when you're closer to it it's probably more you see it more clearly of the way that it it can be seen as some sort of abuse. Um, so, um, but not many people really pay so much of attention. I mean, you just think it's a boring yawn. But I think it will lead to a big bang while she's fizzling out. So, um, I do like the documentary said, the documentary said there's no way is she ever going to be out of conservatorship because people are being paid serious money. They're being paid snippets of her money. Uh, and them having access to it is going to, is going to be one residing factor that is going to lead to her not ever getting out of conservatorship so that people who are being fed the money can continue to be fed the money because she's got a lot of it. Um... But uh, it did say that quite strikingly in that documentary. But it didn't really say, yeah, I think it, she just needs a more persuasive documentary to get some sort of message across. But I'm not sure if anyone's going to make something like that because, like you said, she's there, but she isn't, you know, and... People see her, but they don't particularly care. Um, she's on stage and ha- performing in front of packed house. But now these days, you know, no one's really standing outside um, or backstage with a camera. So, um, so the downside is I don't think she's going to have any half-decent documentaries made on her. Um, so there's this echo around her, which is like, wow, no one cares, you know, um, she's not that famous or she's not the, or in stuff, you know, Hollywood has been hounding, the stars have been hounding for media to back it off. And currently in the world, um, there's a less... Um, promotion of media goods magazines are no longer in the front of stores they're in the back or on the sides where people don't see them to flip through them to you know spontaneously buy when they're checking out so they're positioned in a different way so people don't flip through them they don't see the headlines because they're on the side of the wall where they haven't really looked so, you know, that that has happened in stores. Um, there are fewer magazines on the magazine racks in stores. Um, bookstores have been decreased to one or two bookstores within a, an area as opposed to five to ten bookstores, which had uh, racks and racks, like six racks of, of international m- magazines and newspapers, um, and then you got music stores, so um, that have even the instead of several music stores dotted around the place, they've only kept um, the big W and Target selling the media that used to be sold in music stores. So with all this stuff being changed and taken away, the impact of media is decreasing. So. Um, I don't think in the future that magazines are going to be as trendy as they were like all through the 1980s, 90s to early to to mid-2000s, you know. Um, 
and that's going to reflect on a decrease of the topic of famous people because without people looking through these magazines they won't actually be famous anymore because no one's looking at them um and and so that is also going to you know f- mean once again I've wondered so far in explaining things that I've forgotten my point um the impact of the media is going to be decreased in the future because no one's really looking at this stuff and there's less of it and that's what celebrities wanted all along but you know how will they feel when no no one even wants to look at them anymore so um <laughs> So it's sort of some sort of point. You know, I was I was wafting around explaining these things when I was talking about the documentary to a person. And I was like, you know, it took so long to explain that, I forget what on earth the point was. But, um, but I think it'll become like a slap in the face, like celebrities have been campaign, campaigning against f- fame and being made a spectacle. And how they're going to feel as a normal person when no one wants to notice them and stuff. Yeah, but, um, my clock is going to run out. So I'll just say the documentary was kind of boring, topic of conservatorship. No one really wants to notice it because it's, and worked out Britney is just decreasing in fame. And everyone's waiting for the Big Bang when her depression or whatever is going to overcome. And everyone thinks it's going to lead to a dire, dramatic situation.